islands in the southern part of Lake Malawi were declared a national park. It was the first freshwater park in the world. It also had an impact on the local population because people were not allowed to live or camp in park territory and fishing in the park was forbidden within a hundred meters from the shoreline. Unfortunately, the few guards available to the national park were not able to prevent fishing and not even to prevent people from camping on remote islands. The malaria islands are not remote and therefore suffered heavily from overfishing. The very remote island of Chinyakwazi, once a pristine rock with a unique set of cichlids inhabiting the waters around it, is now illegally inhabited by scores of fishermen. Needless to say that the cichlid populations around the island have been dramatically affected. Fishermen are also camping illegally on the Malaria Islands and fishing within the protected 100 meter zone continues there as well. The intensive growth of the human population has a serious impact on the fish populations of Lake Malawi. And at many places, Utaka, like this Copadichroma cyaneus, have virtually disappeared completely. Alan Pittman and Nigel Cheel started, with agreement of national parks, to construct and employ net busting contraptions to prevent fishermen from hauling nets in the protected zone. After one year they had placed about 150 of these so-called anti-netting devices and were pleased with the results. Initially each device needed to be checked for accumulated pieces of netting but now most fishermen know and understand that fishing within the 100 meter park zone is forbidden and avoid plying their nets there. Each anti-netting device is anchored to the bottom of the lake and floats in mid-water to have its best effect at trapping nets. It was found that heavy rocks made the best anchors, as they are impossible to lift out of the water standing in a boat. But they also needed most preparation. Alan, get your drill ready! anchor gets two lugs with some chain in between, to which the stainless steel cable is fastened that keeps the anti-netting device afloat. Okay Alan, 99 more to go. How do we get them where they need to go? We got help from Larry Johnson, who placed 26 of these devices the first three weeks he was at the Malaria Islands. You'll need at least 10 white people, or 5 Africans, to lift a half ton rock onto a barge. Ok guys, I got 7 more.
anti-netting devices are tied to the rocks. The location of each device is exactly recorded with the GPS, so that we can keep track where now more than 300 net busters have been lowered. of anti-netting devices has already brought back schools of cichlids and the waters around the Maleri Islands are regaining their old glory. Thanks to many concerned aquarists who have donated to the Stuart M. Grant Cichlid Conservation Fund, Alan was able to order the production of 125 new devices by a commercial company, relieving Nigel from spending his free time welding these on his own. Many of these have already been placed by Larry. Waters around the Maleri Islands have now been saved the overfishing that goes on at other places around the lake. And for next year we are looking at placing anti-netting devices at other islands in the National Park. The African fisherman understands that we need to save the diversity of Lake Malawi cichlids, but they do not have funds or any alternative. Please help when you can and donate to the fund and help us all preserve the world's most species-rich lake, Lake Malawi.